Almost 15 years now since Jennifer Kessie disappeared in Orlando without a trace, but newly released police photos could bring new leads in the case. And joining us right now on the phone to talk more about it is Jennifer's father, Drew Kessie. Good morning, Drew. Good to talk to you. Good morning, Amy. Pleasure, and thank you. So, Drew, first I want to see how you, Joyce, and your son Logan are doing and holding up. Um, we're, um, we're okay. Uh, we're fighting the fight we need to fight and trying to move forward in a very purposeful way every day uh, in Jennifer's case. And I think we're doing so. But it's tough. It's hard. Uh, never gets easier. One of the hardest things about any missing persons case is trying to keep that case in the spotlight, and that is something that you guys have really been able to do by bringing your own private investigator into this. And Christina Corbin went through these photos. I know you, you extended to her uh, the opportunity for her to go through some of the case files. Tell me a little bit about this photo of the hood of the car, because a lot of people were surprised when they heard about this that they hadn't heard about it before. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully people know that we um, had an agreement uh, with the Orlando Police Department to obtain all of the files uh, after taking them through the court system. Uh, after receiving the files, we received um, pretty much about 150 pictures of the car, everything. To that day, I think we only saw maybe three or four pictures of the car, and really the same picture and same angle we have seen for years and years and years, but not really in the clarity of some of the other pictures that were in the files. And as soon as we all saw it, we're like, well, what is, what is this? And if you look very close, it truly does look as if someone was slammed down on the front of the hood and almost dragged off with fingers pulling down the hood and its dust and everything. And it was the first time that we saw that, and we went back to our, our law enforcement and said, you know, what, what's up with this picture? And the first response that we received was, well, that's your crime scene. We're like, well, 13 and a half years later, this is what we're seeing, wow. So we're slowly but surely putting together the pieces of the puzzle, uh, some from the files that we've received, and a, a lot of it, honestly, just from the, the, the work that our investigative team has done, and every time that something happens in the media with Jennifer, literally one or two people step out from the dark. And we have absolutely directions to go. And we're thankful for that. Orlando has never given up on Jennifer. And, and we're so grateful for that. And someday they're going to help us solve this. And, and Drew, you know we never will give up. I, I, I want to talk about uh, Chino. This is a person that has come up a couple of times over the last several weeks. We know that Christina Corbin spoke on the phone to him. What do you know about this person? And, and do you feel like police have already spoken to the person who took Jennifer? Well, I, I don't know about the last question, I, I, I don't know if police did or not. Um, Chino, I, I, you know, there's nothing to really say about Chino. Chino is just someone that happened to work and live at Mosaic at, at uh, Millennia. And um, he's just someone in a line of people that, you know, we needed to talk to. Um, not as a person of interest, to be quite honest with you, but for his knowledge. I mean, he was there every day. He lived there. He worked there. And he's not alone. There's two or three others that live there and work there that work for Mosaic, and we're speaking to those people. And it's not because we think that they're the person of interest again. It's because I don't think that they know what they possibly know. Because over the years, people come forward with the little minor things, but they make sense to us in the whole. So we need to speak to these people, and that's why we're after these people drastically to say, sit down with us. We have questions not about you and, and pinning it on you, what you know and what you may think you know or not know that makes sense to us. Yeah, that's such a good point, Drew. And, and I think uh, people need to realize, too, that uh, this is very expensive for your family. I, I went and looked at your GoFundMe account that is helping to pay for this private investigator. Uh, but I imagine that amount of money is not enough. Uh, do you still need help paying for this? 
Absolutely. Um, that figure you see, that figure, it, it's gone. That's That's been used. That's over a two-year period of time right now. Um, and it's unfortunate. It, it's it's one of the, I don't know, things that I've had to do in life. I've never asked for money in, 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 in anything, but it's become needed to move forward. Um, it's, it's in our hands now, and it's very expensive. Millions and millions of dollars have been spent on Jennifer just in, in the law enforcement field. Um, we've almost you know, spent three quarters of a million dollars over the years looking for Jennifer, and it's just gone. So to move forward, uh, funding is needed. Uh, you know, to get specialists and every everyone that you need, you just can't always get pro bono work. Uh, but we've been very lucky. Uh, most of our work that people are doing is pro bono. Right. Listen, uh, the GoFundMe account is still active, uh, so if you are able to, I know the Kessie family would truly appreciate any donations. Drew Kessie, thank you so much, as always, and our love to Joyce and to Logan and the entire Kessie family. Thank you. We appreciate you, too. Thank you. Thanks, Drew. All right.